The excerpt we're dealing with today is rehearsal number nine from Ein Heldenleben by Richard Strauss. It's a classic, there's a lot to do with it, and a lot that is unwritten that is essential for getting it to sound its best. Now, each of these arpeggios has a long opening note in fortissimo, but don't let that trick you up because it's fortissimo, yes, but it's also unaccented. We want this to be broad and smooth. So we want to find a way where we don't have to work quite so hard to get an appropriate volume for the excerpt. Then we have an up bow arpeggiated sweep into a down bow of the landing pitch, all of which needs to be under a slur, so really no bumps in the bow changes. Now, with each of these, distribution is key to making it sound its best. And the biggest key is making sure that we're able to start the up bow in a strong position of the bow, which since we will be in the upper half, the strongest position is going to be just about right at the tip. So it's actually best to start this down bow, the low G, not at the frog, but a little further out so that you can naturally hit the strong part of the bow for the up bow. Without that C failing to speak, like so. Now, I like to also do my best to make sure that the left hand moves as little as possible during each of these arpeggiated sweeps. For the first, that's going to be four, one, one, open, four, harmonic. For the second one, you have a couple options. For a while, I did that all in position using this A harmonic, which meant crossing to this C on second finger. I prefer to keep it more in line with how the other ones are played. So C on the A string, then shift to F on the A string. That move is a tricky one. We want to make sure that we use enough low speed to get the A harmonic to be the loudest part of what we're doing without over accentuating the crossing to the D natural. And the way to do that is to make sure that as you play your up bow, you bring your torso and your upper arm to the higher string, so that way the bow just drops into place instead of you reaching from behind to try to grab it. Now here, that up bow is written a little imprecisely. I would still change to up bow on the first separate triplet, which is the C in this instance. You also have marked here to break this bow. Perfectly acceptable. I prefer one bow, but that's just a matter of preference. Now, the third and fourth arpeggios are the trickiest of them all. And if you have an extension, like I do, you have one way in which you can benefit, which is finding that C on the E string. Now, you don't need it. I don't use it, although I used to. But my preferred fingering for these arpeggios is one that uses David Allen Moore of the LA Phil's concept of equal distance fingerings. So the basic idea is that if you were to measure a minor third, it's the same physical distance as the next major third, and then perfect fourth. It's a different number of notes, but if you were to take a tape measure, it would be identical. And that is something we can use to our advantage by organizing these arpeggios in a way that shift the same distance each time. So the way that I like to do that involves going four, one, one on the A string, then thumb, thumb, three, and then coming 
coming back to the D string for the B natural for volume alone, which for me falls most comfortably on second finger, but other people I know use first finger, other use fourth. It's all up to what your body finds most comfortable. The second one is the same, except for its ending note. And then that shifts back to F now. Which if that shift is tricky, you can always just cross in position, although you will be sacrificing a little brilliance in your sound by doing so. It's a game of choosing what will work best for you in the moment. Now, a way to practice this equal distance fingering and a way to smooth out the string crossings of this arpeggiated sweep is with double stops. Like so. And once you get those hand shapes in position, that will help your intonation be more reliable and it will help you have a smoother crossing as you ascend to the high C. Now, we crescendo through that F natural in tenor clef right before rehearsal 10. So definitely take an up bow there. And there's traditionally a little bit of rubato taken, a little extra time going into 10, because this is getting into this big sort of uh, exhausted, but happy about it, arpeggiation of rehearsal 10. <laughs> Because of the triple forte and because of the gesture of the line, it, as a contrast to the first arpeggio of rehearsal nine, I prefer to close uh, the G natural. So one, one, and I find two on E flat most comfortable, but four could work as well. But in either case, we're coming back, and I go one, two, one, two. so we don't need to work too hard for them, but we want to keep that sort of rhythm in a favorable part of the bow, which will be right around the end of the wrap. You have marked here an as it comes bowing, which is great. Keep in mind that you want to release each of the eighth note arrivals and not travel too much in the follow through to keep the bow in more or less the same place. And then we get to this dotted half note which diminuendos below forte, so this accented F natural is going to be a little bit more. A little energized. And then when we get to rehearsal 11, you only have to play one bar of the trill, which is good. It saves you the trouble of falling into the trap that is shifting sharp through your trill. But in either case, keep an eye on that. It's a common temptation to end up going higher than you should be just because of the motion of the trill itself. Now, some metronome tips that I found very helpful are to actually put this in straight eighth notes as opposed to triplets. So if we are going, that's around 124, and I put on eighth notes, that forces me to really feel the triplet. Like so. And that's great for rehearsal 10 as well. To make sure that you're really feeling the rhythm internally and not relying on external stimulus to get it. Um, I hope these tips prove helpful. Again, the overall thing is we want to find a way for this to not require too much energy for the unmarked notes so that you have some extra energy reserved for when we have accents and other important notes in the excerpt. Good luck on your preparation and your audition, and thank you very much.